The fact that uh, we have sexual assault within our ranks that are going unprosecuted uh, is a problem. Countless of men and women have come forward and experienced a horrible response by their command, by the military that they love, and it not only sours them on their military service, but it undermines their confidence that the military, again, is worthy of the sacrifices that they are making. That has to change, and that's why this bill is so urgent and so important. It's something that the military has begun to talk about, uh, largely because they don't want to pass this bill. And so we made sure that the thing they wanted in the bill is in there too. And we've passed over 250 laws <laughs> to prevent sexual assault and to make the process better, but they haven't dented the problem because the system itself is corrupted and you need to have an independent, well-trained, unbiased set of eyes that look at these problems and try to find the right result. Uh, that is something we need to build, that's what this bill does, and we have added additional training for commanders so they know what they're doing in terms of stopping sexual assault and making sure the investigations take place properly and to make sure there's no retaliation. Uh, we have additional safety measures in place, um, sometimes barracks are not safe places for men and women. This is something that is a scourge in our U.S. military and is harming our good order and discipline and harming morale and harming retention. And so if you want to have the strongest military force in the world, you need to have a criminal justice system within it to protect the service members who serve so faithfully, so ably, and so selflessly. One of the biggest challenges survivors of sexual assault in the military have had is that when they do come forward, they are often retaliated against. A sexual assault can destroy a person's life. Uh, not only is it a betrayal of someone within their unit or someone they serve with, but then the secondary betrayal of a commander not believing them or retaliating against them or not seeing their perpetrator be punished. That secondary trauma has harmed more and more men and women who have been sexually assaulted even more than the first assault. We talked to experts, we talked to the survivor community, and they said that if the decision about whether to prosecute a crime uh, was made by a trained military prosecutor instead of a commander, they might be more likely to report and that they thought there'd be more hope of justice being done. We are close to having 60 co-sponsors on this legislation, uh, which is the key number to be able to pass this bill. What I've learned over time is there are many issues that are not partisan, that are not Democratic issues or Republican issues. Uh, there are sexual assaults against all women and men, uh, regardless of their political party, and so the solution really does need to be nonpartisan. The men and women who protect our country and sacrifice everything for our security and safety, they deserve our voice, they deserve our support, and they deserve a vote on this measure. Mm -hmm.